The next reflex we're going to talk about is the flexor reflex, also known as the withdrawal reflex. This is a reflex that is polysynaptic and is uh, protect you from a potentially harmful stimulus. In this particular instance, what we're seeing is that this, in this picture, this individual has stepped on attack. <clears throat> that is going to stimulate sensory receptors, and the sensory receptors in this particular reflex are nociceptors. These are pain sensitive receptors. So tissue damage is the stimulus which will result in your brain perceiving it as pain that causes this reflex arc to initiate. So let's follow the reflex arc. <clears throat> as the foot steps on the tack, it's going to stimulate the sensory receptors generating a nerve impulse in a sensory neuron that will travel <clears throat> into the spinal nerve in the dorsal root, in the dorsal horn of gray matter, and branch and synapse twice. Now these two synapses are unique because first off one of them will stimulate the contraction of a specific muscle. One branch is synapsing with an interneuron, an excitatory interneuron, that will then synapse with a motor neuron. What that is resulting in is the motor neuron impulse coming out the ventral horn, actually the ventral horn of gray matter and the ventral root, and then out the spinal nerve and to the hamstring muscle, causing it to contract, which will flex the knee, pulling the foot away from the stimulus. Why it's called the flexor, because it flexes the knee, or the withdrawal reflex, because it withdraws the body part from the stimulus. So that's one thing that's happening here. Another thing that you're going to notice is that different parts of the hamstring muscles are innervated by different levels of the spinal cord. So different nerves are innervating the hamstring muscle group that can be traced back to different spinal nerves. So one of the branches that's going to synapse here is going to synapse with an interneuron that will then travel to different segments of the spinal cord, maybe one level up and one level down in the spinal cord, where it will then synapse with an interneuron, an excitatory interneuron, that will synapse with a motor neuron at a different level, which will also exit the spinal cord, go through the ventral root into the spinal nerve, and innervate a different section of the hamstring group. So because the hamstring muscles need to contract for this reflex arc, and the hamstring muscles are innervated by different levels of the spinal cord, all those levels of the spinal cord have to be stimulated to finish the reflex arc on the motor end. So this reflex is termed an intersegmental reflex arc because not only is it resulting in the stimulation of a motor neuron at the same segment but it also will use interneurons that travel superiorly and inferiorly within the spinal cord to then stimulate motor neurons that exit the spinal cord on different spinal nerves at different levels of the spinal cord maybe L1, L2, L3, etc. So this is a polysynaptic reflex arc because it requires multiple synapses and it's an ipsilateral reflex arc because the same muscle contracts on the same side of the stimulus and it's also an intersegmental reflex arc because it requires the stimulation of motor neurons that come from multiple sections or levels of the spinal cord. This reflex image here does not depict it, but this reflex will also have reciprocal innervation causing inhibitory signals to go to the quadricep muscles, turning them off so that the hamstring muscles can contract more easily. Very typical reciprocal innervation. It is just a result in the, resulting in the opposite effect to the antagonist. That is the flexor or withdrawal reflex.